So, hi all. Uh, today I'm going to talk about value numbering in uh, our compiler in GCC. Um, first, okay. the keys did work. No, it works. Uh, so value numbering is uh, a, a, a process that assigns value numbers to expressions. So that means that expressions that produce the same value that should have the same value number. Uh, usually that's achieved by something like a hashing uh, of simplified and also canonicalized expressions uh, when their operands are replaced by the value number. So um, what is this all used for? That's used by uh, optimizations like common sub-expression elimination and partial redundancy elimination, of which in GCC there are quite some different implementations. Uh, a set of implementations are working on the RTL intermediate language. That's the re register transfer language that's more close to the actual CPU target. And another set uh, of optimization passes are working on the GIMPL SSA uh, intermediate language. That's more of a high level language that kind of looks like C if you restrict expressions to like three operator things like a simple add uh, and stuff like that. Um, and there are also simpler forms of value numbering in, in uh, optimizations like constant propagation or copy propagation, where it, for the constant propagation case, for example, uh, value numbers are basically constants. Right, so um, let me, for, so, so in, in this talk, I am going uh, to focus on uh, the Gimbal SSA uh, redundancy elimination passes, which use uh, a value numbering framework that operates on a special program um, order that I will talk later about. And because of uh, we are on the Gimbal SSA form, I will try to introduce SSA to you quickly. Um, so SSA is a static single assignment form, and that uh, basically means that each variable uh, exactly is assigned to once, so it has a single definition. And if you have a, a regular C program and the variable i, then you can see usually you assign to i multiple times. So in SSA form, we want to distinguish these two definitions, and so we introduce version numbers. So we introduce different versions of this variable i, the version that it has after the first assignment, which in this case would be the, the i denoted with the number 2 that is assigned to uh, as j of the version 1 plus 1. And the second version we introduce in this case is the i with the version 3, which consumes the i with the version 2 and multiplies is uh, multiplied by 2. Um, so this. Uh, the advantage of this is that when you see a use of a variable, like in this case, the i underscore 2, uh, there's exactly a single definition you can look up. And you don't need to see which one is currently live. So that's, that simplifies implementation of optimization passes, basically. So um, you might think that it's a little bit more complicated, and that's correct, because if you have a control flow, um, you need to merge different versions of the same variable. For example, in this case, I, so this is a, um, a picture of the GCC intermediate language for a simple C program that tests i to be uh, less or equal than 6. And in that case, incrementing i and then basically returning the, the altered value, the conditional altered value. And you can see we, we have this increment of i that is conditionally executed. And this uh, increment introduces a new version of the variable i. But in the end, we want to return i. So we need to pick which one we take, either 
the first one, which is not altered, or the second one. And for this reason, at the CFG merge points, so when the two edges of the control flow graph uh, get into the, the same block, uh, we have to introduce new definitions of I that are basic that are called phi nodes, and those merge the two um, versions of the variable that flow into this block. So in this case, the two version and the three version, and we produce a new version, the version one. So that the, the numbers are actually quite arbitrary. They just have to be distinct. So don't be confused that the one is less than two and three. And then we can return uh, the version one in the end, or as it is here, it is intermediately assigned to another variable, but that shouldn't matter at this point. Uh, another advantage of the st static single assignment form is that uh, if you have a use of a variable, the definition you can look up, which, which uh, as I said, there's exactly one, in this case the one, uh, it is dominating all of the users. And dominating means that all paths through the program that reach the use will also first go through the definition. That's also quite a, a nice property for optimization later on. So what is now common sub-expression elimination? Um, when you do common sub-expression elimination, you basically, for each statement in program order, uh, you try to simplify the expression that is computed in this statement uh, using the value numbers of the operands. So for example, if there's uh, the SSA version 1 minus SSA version 2, but they are actually assigned the same value number, then you can simplify the expression to 0. Right? So you first simplify the expression. And then if, like for example, this the expression didn't simplify, you can uh, try to look up this simplified expression in your hash table of expressions that you've already seen. And if you've already seen this expression, um, then you can take the value number of that expression and assign it to basically to the, the result of where, where you store the, the computed expression then this, this variable gets uh, the value number you just found. And if you couldn't find uh, the simplified expression in your expression hash table, then you will just assign a new uh, value number for this expression. In the, in the implementation, we are talking about the value numbers are either constants, because the constant is a value number on its own, uh, or they are uh, the the as is the, the variable with the SSA version of the variable the expression was assigned to when we didn't find it before. So let me go back one slide. For example, if we visit this statement and we look up the i2 plus 5, we can't find it in our hash table, the value number will be i3 in that case. Uh, so, um, I forgot one piece, uh, that is, uh, if we find uh, the expression in the hash table, we can uh, replace the expression with the constant, if the value number was constant, or uh, the register that, um, that, has, that contains the, 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 the value of the expression at this point, of the program. And that needs something that's called availability, because, again, let me go back to the nice figure. Uh, consider we, we'd have uh, a separate, uh, we'd actually have on both arms of the, the if, the same increment of i, then if we would visit the statement in the, in the other block on, on the side of this, then we would look up the expression, which we've inserted already, and we'll find, oh, well, We've already seen the expression, and the value was i3. But of course, in, if the control flow goes to a different block here, we can't simply use i3 in this block, because it's not available here, because the definition doesn't dominate this point of the program. Right? 
So, uh, so we have to track where are our values actually available. And that's the most easiest way is if we do not uh, perform a, a program walk, but a dominator walk uh, of a, a function, then we can basically, when we visit a statement and <coughs> record a new value number, then we can um, then we can just keep a one-to-one -one map uh, with with the current the current um, variable currently holding the value. So each time we, we see the same expression, we can update this uh, with with the left hand side of the actual expression. And when we we do the dominator walk. Uh, we basically backtrack when we go back to the, the parent of in, in, the, in the tree, and then we can restore the previous value in this map. So the, the, the implementation we are talking about actually performs a, um, a program order walk that is it's called a reverse post order um, walk of the control to, of the control flow graph, uh, and so that, that it isn't really easily possible to um, to backtrack as easy if you get uh, get into and out of the conditional context again uh, which is why in, in the implementation we are talking about we are recording a list of um, ex uh, a list of variables where each value is available and and where that's actually valid and we can check the validity with a simple dominator check Um, and in, in the implementation, we are using uh, a generic pattern matching facility, facility that GCC has to simplify expression uh, expressions. Uh, that's that's called the match PD. It's actually a, a name of the file, and it uses a domain specific language to um, to yeah well to describe to 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 have that there are like expression patterns. Uh, with the corresponding simplification, like there's a pattern for variable plus zero that this one should simplify to the variable, and the plus zero can be elided, and of course more complex patterns. And this uh, machinery can can be used in, in some generic way, and we're uh, using it during the value numbering to simplify the expressions with the uh, operands replaced by values. Uh, in this case, by actually uh, available leaders of the values, because in that, uh, when we do that, we, we can keep uh, things like uh, flow sensitive ranges um, for, for the simplification. That's an, an advantage we have over the previous implementation. And so that, that gets us a little bit better uh, value numbering results when we can can do more simplification. Um, so that all looks quite straightforward, but of course there's uh, there's a slight complication. Uh, so for now, I always talked about variables that were in SSA form, so that had exactly a single definition. But there's also memory, of course. In, in all your programs, you're eventually accessing memory, or even uh, automatic variables are effective memory and need to be uh, stored on the stack, for example, when you take the address. And when you, when you have memory, it's not really possible to have this invariant of having a single definition that's easily accessible from uh, a use, because there's things like pointers, and when you have pointers, there's aliasing, right? So there can, there can be two different pointers pointing at the same variable, and when you modify uh, the same variable through different pointers, it's it's no longer easy to keep track of the current definition, and there, because it's not possible, there may be even main definitions, so where the compiler doesn't know if it's really storing to for uh, for to a specific memory location or not. 
So in uh, what the, 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 the way around to still be kind of in, in SSA uh, that GCC uses is to, to um, have a global memory state, that is this dot mem variable, and that one is uh, written into SSA. So the memory state is updated, which each, which each store, so if we, in this case, store to the pointer P, uh, with, with a, which is an aggregate in that case, pointer to an aggregate to the member A, then the, the memory state gets updated from state one to state three. And at the second store, it gets updated from state three to state four. So there's always a single active memory state. And with that, we can do the same as before, instead of as expression hashing just in this, in this case, for example, x.a, we have to hash x.a at memory state five. And then if we, at a different point of the program, see the same x.a at the memory state five, we know they will have the same value. But of course, that won't happen very easily that we see exactly the same memory state, um, which is uh, which is why we at when we actually try to look up this x dot a at state five in the hash tables, we are performing uh, a walk over all of all of these uh, memory state altering statements and see if we actually arrive at the definition of x.a. So in this case, we are checking if we have the x.a at the memory state five in the hash table, and we don't. Uh, so we look at the, the definition of the memory state, which is the, the assignment to x, uh, and, and see, well, okay, it's actually a definition of x.a, but not exactly, right? So, so we, we can't really use the value of uh, the, the star p underscore two uh, for this expression because this this uh, encompasses the, the whole aggregate and not only the member a. So what we do is we, we switch over to the right side, we modify the expression we are looking for, and now we start looking for um, star p dot a instead, and we are looking at the memory state four. So we continue walking and see a definition for the member B, which we say, well, it's not aliasing. So it, there, there cannot be any overlap between P uh, arrow, arrow A and P arrow B. So we continue with the next memory state, which is memory state three, and then look up the expression P, uh, P arrow A, and whoops, we, we will find it. And this expression actually has been assigned the value number zero. And so we can find the value zero for the expression x.a at the memory state five. Uh, as you can imagine, that can take quite some compile time and the memory handling is actually the major time sink in common sub expression elimination because yeah, memory is hard and all the validation of if uh, the, the, if, the, if the stores we visit actually may alter the expression we are looking up, that is the, 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 more, the most um, expensive part. And of course, that we need to visit that many uh, possible stores. So it, it might be that we actually arrive at a statement where we cannot really tell, does it alter the memory uh, location? or not, and at, a, at such a point we have to simply stop because we, we can't really look for a different memory operation that would match because we, 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 are, not, uh, we, don't, we are not sure whether the value we then will then find will be still correct. And to, so to limit the complexity, this, this walking is also limited to a constant number of statements. I think it's about 500 or so, so it's, it's a quite high number, but in practice, you always arrive at some statement where you have to stop anyway for correctness reasons, like for example, any call that is performed. And if your memory operation, uh, the memory expression you are looking up involves global memory, 
then you have to assume that the call will alter the, uh, the expression. So what I already said, the, the memory state is part of the hashing. Uh, we, we perform a walk of these memory state SSA use def chains. Um, there are quite some fancy tricks implemented in, in this walking to handle more cases because uh, common sub expression elimination of memory and then uh, further eliminating uh, dead stores or dead loads are of course the, the most important part of the common sub expression elimination because memory as we've uh, learned memory accesses in the in the uh, talk about the, from the performance team is is quite crucial to avoid uh, loading things into the cache and it makes most of the difference uh, in practice so we can we can uh, handle memory to memory copies when when looking up expressions that just read pieces of it we can also like uh, value number uh, uh, vector loads from from fully constant but partially constructed arrays um, and we can also um, well that's basically the same I think oh no, that's so if like a, 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 an element is, is extracted of a, from a vector store and the vector store was constant we can easily extract the correct constant portion of it and as I said it's taking the majority of the compile time So let me uh, talk a little bit about the, the implementation, the actual implementation. So previous to the, the implementation that now uses this uh, program order walk of a function, we had an implementation that was tailored to uh, SSA. It basically looked at the SSA um, graph representation of the function. Um, let me check if I have the, no, I don't have the, the graph here. Um, so basically the SSA graph has edges from the use of a variable to the definition. And you can basically form a graph out of this whole thing. And the idea is that if you look at the SSA graph, then you can find, find cycles in that and the cycles you have to iterate during value numbering. If, at least if you if you like optimistically treat um, a variable that you've not yet visited the definition of as basically top, and if you merge that with an already visited one and then you ignore the top, basically continue as if um, Parts of the CFG that you know that you've not proven to be executable are not executable, right? So you have to, to iterate then because you can later figure that uh, parts the, the part that you assumed not executable is actually executable, and then you have to restart again uh, with that assumption uh, corrected. Um, so that that matches quite nicely to the variable SSA part, but where it doesn't match as nicely is uh, on, on the memory SSA graph. But it also has to take that into account for all memory operations. Um, and that showed that it, it, it isn't uh, all the advantages, the, the nice SSA formulation of the value numbering had, uh, they, they are basically lost when you factor in the memory state SSA. Um, and then the, the, the problems the scheme has on its own, like that the, the iteration regions, the iteration on the SSA graph doesn't really match up with CFG cycles. So it's, it's difficult to perform optimizations that rely on like conditional values. So, so if you have an if uh, i is equal five, then on in the true on the true arm you want to basically assume that i is five, but that's quite difficult if you're iterating uh, iterating on a thing that's that's not matching with that CFG because there's really no way to 
funnel in that e equality into those iterations. So the idea was to, to just scrap the idea of uh, doing the value numbering on the SSA graph and instead do it on the, on the control flow graph and basically visit the, the function in program order, like if you that's just in the way the execution flows, right? Um, the disadvantage is that also there you have to iterate. Now you have to iterate the, the control flow and all the statements that are on the, on the control flow graph, uh, which means it is slightly more costly because on the SSA SCC, you only have the statements that participate in, 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 the, in the actual value cycle. But uh, when you look at the control flow graph, you have all statements participating in the iteration that are in the control flow cycle, which are not necessarily in a value cycle, right? But um, it, it allows for these flow sensitive optimizations quite easily. And even more important, it allows um, to be applied to a region of the function. There was another main motivation of the rewrite of the value numbering algorithm. So we can, can use that on demand from other optimizations that, for example, just apply a transform to a loop body. And after that, uh, wants to redo the value numbering, but only on the loop body and not on the whole, whole function, because it's then cheaper compile time bias. Uh, so the, the the new scheme it can it can uh, operate with different efforts for the memory handling. So it can can do uh, the the very simplistic lookup on uh, with the current memory state only, or it can do the more complex walking that I uh, uh, that I described before. Uh, it can do the optimistic and iterating value numbering, which means that edges in a control for graph that are not proven executable are assumed not executable. But it can also do a non-iterating uh, non -iterating version, which means that uh, when we didn't yet visit an edge, which happens if you have a, a, a control for graph cycle and you um, enter this cycle, that there is the back edge from, from the, the end of the cycle, that you haven't yet visited. So in, in the non-iterating version, we just have to assume it is actually executable. Um, and then we don't have to iterate. And uh, the, the new algorithm it can operate on a whole function or on regions that are determined by a single entry, but can have multiple exits. So that, that perfectly suits loops, for example. So reducible loops. So let me uh, again show uh, iterating versus non-iterating. So in this example, you can see that we have uh, a loop that if you look at the initial values, like i is zero in the beginning and n is one, we increment i and this is the loop, the, the looping test. It will in the first in the first iteration, so when it didn't yet iterate, actually uh, execute the exit from the loop. So the loop will not iterate. If we are using the, the iterating scheme, then when entering the loop for the first time, then we will assume that this back edge is not executable and basically just ignore uh, the values in these merges of the SSA version of the SSA variables, right? So we will uh, assign to i1 the value 0 from the entry edge. And then we can increment it here and we can compute 0 plus 1 is 1. And we can uh, evaluate at compile time this condition as 1 is less than 1 and that's false. And so we exit the loop. And then we are done. So we are not making this uh, edge executable and we will optimize this branch statically. When we are in the non-iterating scheme, which means we do not need to iterate. So as I described, even in the iterating scheme, we wouldn't iterate because we are not making this uh, back edge executable. 
But when we, we want to be sure to never iterate, then we have to assume this edge is executable when we enter the loop, which means we are uh, going to merge the zero and this i7, but we have not yet visited this. So we, it's basically unknown. And if we merge zero with unknown, it gets us unknown. Uh, so we basically lose the ability to assign a meaningful value to i1 and i7. And so we can't optimize this jump statically. Then we won't iterate because we are already conservative, correct? But we've not optimized this branch statically with the non-iterating scheme. Right? And with the, with the iterating scheme, if you now assume n3 would be 2, then we'd, in the first iteration, statically determine that we are taking the loop back edge. And this edge to the exit would be not executable. But then we'd feed in uh, the, the value 1 for the i7 here, and we'd merge 0 and 1. And that's basically unknown again. And so we'd start again with, with value numbering these statements and get unknown for the i7, unknown for the branch. And we then have to make this edge ex executable as well and get to the same result, not, optimize, not optimizing this branch statically when n3 is 2. And the loop will actually loop. So um, the, the implementation actually for, for the for the iteration it has to be it has to do quite some bookkeeping to also handle irreducible regions that is loops that have multiple entries um, and it it actually calculates the the, the order of the, the the program order it visitors. It visits the, the function, which is not does not only a single valid program order, but there are many because basically at each branch you can decide which one which way to go first. Uh, but we, we compute an optimal iteration order so that the cycles it will later iterate um, are the smallest because the iteration always happens in chunks of this. Um, reverse post order. So basically, we are going through a, an array of blocks, which is these reverse post order. And when we need to iterate, we just skip back on this array and iterate over the, the, the stride of blocks. And the, this special uh, computation of the uh, reverse post order ensures that these blocks we possibly iterate are smallest, as smallest as possible. Right, and um, um, one one important thing for the implementation to make it usable on on regions of the function was to have the the cost of setup and the cost of um, doing the the actual unwinding when we re need to restart for iteration uh, linear in in the amount of of work to do and not like dependent on the function size or the number of SSA variables in the function and stuff like that. Um, so that, um, uh, much of the, the implementation effort was spent to, to ensure that so that it's actually really usable to uh, and, and not a problem if you use the region-based value numbering a lot. Um, so the, 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 iteration, the iteration itself, um, you, you can probably imagine if you have a very deep loop nest, so you have loops inside loops and inside loops and so on, uh, then, then uh, the, the iteration is the iteration cost is, is linear in the loop depth. So you need to perform more iterations the deeper your loop nest is. Uh, and the, you, you basically have the choice do you do the outer iteration first or the inner iterations first. And it has proven to be the cheapest to do the inner iterations first and to, to combat this growth in the complexity with the loop depths, we are treating, uh, we are only iterating the innermost 
I think, five loop levels. And for outer loop levels, if the, the, the nest is really deep, we are uh, using the assumption that the back edge is already executable. So basically, we are using the non-iteration scheme there to, to uh, limit this cost. <coughs> okay. So for the for the non-iterative mode, um, we are um, we we do also compute this uh, special iteration order, um, but we are only using it as a hint to order a greedy walk. So basically, we, we, we start from function entry. And uh, when we can optimize a branch statically, we, we only go to the, to, the, um, to the edge we know is executable. And if we ever reach a block where there is an incoming edge that we did not yet visit, which basically happens for loops, then we take conservative measures and basically force all the unvisited uh, expressions that flow through that edge, which will in SSA always be uh, via fee nodes, we force them to be to have an unknown value, right? And so we are basically only looking at executable portions of the function, and the non-executable portions they are not even uh, visited, which also helps compile time, at least uh, for the very early optimization where there's actually still much not executable code. Right. Uh, so, and the, that also allows us to, to handle the, the fee nodes when there are unreachable incoming edges, but we know they are not back edges. We can handle them optimally by ignoring those values when, when doing the merges. So basically, if you have an if diamond that you can statically resolve to only go through the through, through uh, edge, then we can optimize at the merge block uh, the, the values that are incoming to those that are on the on the true side of the if. So what what can value numbering actually do? Uh, for example, if you if you have the the common problem of needing to pun bit representations of of two different values, the one one way to do that is to use memory. Uh, and for example, in this case, a union. This is uh, something that GCC allows as an extension to store a value into the one member of the union and then uh, read the bit representation with an access to the not active uh, union member. Right? And a value numbering in this case can see that uh, when, when value numbering the, the access with the integer, type that it, it was stored from the, the register F. Uh, so it can elide the, the union on the stack and instead do a bit conversion of the floating point value to an integer value. And it can do the same if you use a float variable and a mem copy, for example. Right, you can, uh, if you have the, an integer variable and you do a mem copy into the int from the float then uh, and then just return the integer then GC could do the same and the value numbering will see through this mem copy and uh, return you the uh, bit cast of uh, the input register. Uh, so this is another case like if you if you had uh, if you're using the GC vector extension and you you want to construct a vector and for whatever reason you you think that uh, using an, an uh, integer vector of four is the way to do it, the way to go you zero it and you store a single member uh, a single lane with the constant one then value numbering can actually just optimize this to uh, a return of a constant vector which all lines being zero and one and the, the second line being one. That only works for constants because if you store like uh, um, some character value that is not constant here, then of course there's no way to represent this nicely as a constant. 
So in, in this case, uh, using the value numbering will also elide the, the storage of the array. So, but there are of course cases value numbering can't do at least, or or at least it uh, cases that it doesn't handle, because in in principle, uh, in principle, uh, you can simulate. This function, you can simulate all the loop iterations and figure that uh, v, that the, the element two of v is assigned to the value two, and uh, the element one of the array w is assigned the value two as well. And so you could optimize this to return zero. But as I uh, outlined when I showed you how the, the iteration scheme works for loops, um, at at the, the second iteration, the, even the, the value of i will not be known because it has a different value in each iteration, but the intermediate language only has a single variable assigned to it. Right? So the only way to get this optimized to zero in the end is if GCC first performs unrolling of both loops, which you would uh, then yield just scalar codes and individual assignments to all of the elements of the arrays. But of course, in principle, one could fully simulate this function and somehow remember uh, the, the values for the individual uh, lanes of this memory location in this case. So I would say, so this is basically from an order or audience, and I would say we have time, short time for questions, if there are any. Doesn't seem so. So, if all of this uh, made you interesting in in hacking and GCC, there are now uh, I think since, since today individual recordings of the talks from the GNU Quadrant available, where there are a lot of talks about GCC. So if you're interested, you can, I think, just uh, search for GNU Cauldron in YouTube, and you will figure quite a list of interesting talks about compiler topics.